Jared Poland. Frono's photo. Dot com, and this is your photo news fix. This fix is brought to you by Rode and their Video Mic Pro Plus, which is my mic of choice for when I'm vlogging or need to record anything extra when I'm on the road. I also so happen to have one more of them to give away, so may I suggest that you give this video a thumbs up and leave a valuable comment about the stories down below. For more information, head on over to bit.ly slash froroad. First up, the people at Vision Research, who are the makers of the Phantom slow motion camera, just announced their fastest four megapixel camera ever made. It will capture a whopping 6,600 frames per second at 4 megapixels, and at 1080p, it can shoot 11,750 frames per second. Now I wonder, Dan, if that is all being shot in RAW. I doubt it. Vision Research says the V2640 features very high dynamic range, 64 dB, and the lowest noise floor of any Phantom camera, 7.2 E minus, whatever that means, making it an excellent tool for researchers, scientists, and engineers who need to capture capture clean, high-resolution images at ultra-high speeds, or for YouTubers who want to blow shit up. Here are some quick specs on the camera. The V2640 has an ISO rating of 16,000 in black and white, ISO 3200 in color, a maximum shutter speed of, get this, 142 nanoseconds, up to 288 gigabytes of memory, 10 gigabit ethernet, and, 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 it weighs in at 17 pounds, eight ounces. Now, if you had this camera, what would you want to see in slow motion? Dan, we all know what Todd wants. Remember when I said one day I would like to see a one inch sensor in a smaller DJI drone? Well, there are now rumors being reported by Drones Reviews News, yep, that's their name, DRN, that the next Mavic Pro might include a one inch sensor. On top of that, they're reporting that flight times might be as much as 35 minutes, though I personally get bored after three minutes myself, so that's really not needed. They are also saying that we will see a new design that will borrow some from the brand new Mavic Air and possibly be slightly larger to handle a bigger payload. Now, if these rumors are true and we get a one inch sensor in a smaller package, we will be very happy. And finally, the self-proclaimed greatest landscape photographer in the history of the world. I'm such an amazing landscape photographer. I suck. Peter Lick is back in the news. You know what? I don't think he's actually ever said that. Now, for those of you who don't know who Peter is, he has reportedly sold a half a billion dollars in prints and has claimed to sell a single print for six and a half million dollars back in 2014, although no one knows for sure whether he did or he did not. So why is Peter back in the news this time? Simple, he released an image called Moonlit Dreams. And there's a debate on whether or not it's a single image, composite image, or a combination of both with heavy digital manipulation. F Stoppers called Lick out in a 31 minute video published on their site called How Fake Is This Photo by Peter Lick. In the video, four photographers go back and forth debating whether or not the photo was real, as well as how could it actually have been made. They discuss the dynamic range, to the type of lens that would have had to have been used to capture that type of image, to whether or not the cloud should be behind the moon or in front of it, or both. They also get a little more technical on where the shadow should be if the sun was setting and the moon was rising as well. Photographer Steve Cullen points out the curious issue that says the moon in the image appears to be identical to the moon in another lick photo titled Bella Luna. Not Plava Laguna, Dan. You know Plava Laguna, right? Fifth element? They go on to say how it would almost be impossible to get the same exact moon in the exact same position at two different times. Now here's my take. I don't know enough about landscape photos, even though I'm the greatest landscape photographer of all times, not true, to tell you whether or not it's real or fake. Now based off of looking at it, I would lean more towards it being fake because it's just too perfect. But here's the thing, even if it's digital art and not a photo straight out of the camera or one with light touching up, it doesn't really matter. The guy sells millions of dollars of images. He can do whatever he wants to his images because he doesn't have to uphold any photojournalistic standards. All he needs to do is find people who want to buy his manipulated prints, allegedly. I personally would be upfront if I was manipulating my images, but at the end of the day, he's the one making millions of dollars and I'm not. Now, what's your take on this? Do you think it's real? Do you think it's fake? Do you even care? Leave me a comment down below. And there you have it. That's your photo news fix this time around. To check out the last photo news fix, go ahead and click on the screen 
right here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment. And that is what I have to say. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.